Hey friends, hey friends, hey friends, it's me Alana, welcome back to my channel. some flowers in a world full of weeds. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I wanted to do my September wrap up for you all. So this will be a pretty short video because I only read two books in September, which honestly, I am pretty proud of because I was in a really bad reading slump. And so, I'm just glad I was able to at least read two things <laughs> that I had committed to last month. Unfortunately, I didn't get through any of the, my other TBR. I didn't even really do good with the readathons that I had committed to, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and start talking about the books because that's what you're here for. So the first book I have here is A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. I read this for the Krusty book club which is run by Chanel from Chanel time she very graciously asked me to co-host a September's pick with her and some other wonderful hosts you can go find that uh, live show on her channel um, I'll try and leave a link of it up here or down below somewhere but yeah so I read this I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars I really wanted to love this because of how many people have raved about it and said they loved it, but it just was not for me. I enjoyed the concept of the story. I really did enjoy the world. I loved learning about the gods and just the history behind it. I really loved that aspect of the story. I think it was the characters that really did it for me though. So. In case you don't know, this follows two characters, Malik and Karina. Malik is a refugee coming into this city that is basically under the rule of Karina and her family. So a lot of things end up taking place where the book is basically Malik and Karina trying to figure out how to kill each other. And that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to give it into too many details and I feel like if I give too many details I'll end up spoiling it and I really don't want to do that for anybody. But I really liked Malik. I definitely loved him. I loved his perspective on things. I liked following the story through his eyes, especially in regards to seeing like what he was going through because he really struggled with anxiety and panic attacks and it was really interesting to relate to him on that and then see um how that tied into the story and how things played out for him so i really enjoyed his aspect it was karina that really i guess just like not ruined the story but just made me not be able to connect with it as much as I wanted to. There were certain aspects where I understood where she was coming from in regards to like the choices that she was making, but then there are other aspects where I just didn't really understand her choices and her thought processes behind things. <laughs> Even when you were reading from her perspective, it just didn't really click. And I don't know if that was just me or not i mean it could have just been me but it just didn't really feel like for me her her personality and who she was was as flushed out as i wanted it to be like malik's also i really didn't like the romance i kind of wish that it wasn't even involved in this story which is rare because i really like romance in my books but for this book in particular i Honestly, just don't think it was necessary. I feel like without the romance, it could have been so much better because it just didn't feel natural, if that makes sense for me. So, yeah. That's all I'm going to say because I, I don't I'm trying not to spoil it and I feel like more of my thoughts tie into spoilers. And so we're just going to stop there. 
But yeah, 3.5 out of 5 stars. Um, I definitely recommend this because I think other people will definitely enjoy it. Because that's the majority of what I've seen. It's just, for me, this just wasn't it. So if you are interested in picking this up, I still encourage you to do so because you will probably enjoy it more than me. More than likely. <laughs> And I saved uh, my favorite book for last <laughs> because there's only two books. So uh, the book I have here is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. Oh my gosh, I gave this five out of five stars. <laughs> it's so good, guys. Okay, if I was going to name Brie who gets accepted into this residential program at uh, UNC and, and a couple of months before that, her mother had passed away. And so she is still dealing with her grief from that. And so one night while she's at this school, she sees something happen um, that involves magic and demons. And so it triggers a memory. And because of this memory, she thinks that whatever she saw that night is connected to her mother's death. And she actually realizes that there is a like secret society on the campus that is tied to the legends of King Arthur. And she so happens to meet one of the people connected to the society. And so she convinces him, Nick, to help her basically infiltrate and figure out what's going on with this thing and how it's connected to her mom basically. So, my thoughts. I love this book so freaking much. Okay, so it starts really slow. For me, it started pretty slow, and so I was really struggling to, like, get through it, not because I didn't enjoy it, but because it was just kind of still building. But once it hit, like, the halfway point is really when it picked up, and I really was, like, invested, because there was just so much happening, and the characters were all doing things that were stressing me out and I really enjoyed that about the story. I love the fact that the author made this story so complex but not in a way you couldn't understand it. There's just so many elements that play into this plot honestly and I really enjoyed unraveling all of those elements. Granted, I will say the King Arthur legends don't get too complex, so if you're someone who's hesitating because you don't really know the legends that well, I was in the same boat, and honestly, after reading this, I, it didn't confuse me. I understood what was happening. But I loved the fact that this really does include history, so she talks a lot about slavery because this is an area that was very, very... Uh, concentrated in that in history and she talks about the fact that it is majority white and this society that Brie is trying to infiltrate is majority white and that is brought up a lot which I definitely enjoyed because it's stuff that never really gets talked about in fantasy how like certain things that are happening are full of white people anyways so yeah and it's funny too because they label uh the stuff that the society is doing as like colonizer colonizer magic and i was like but are they wrong though no so then the thing i liked too was that as brie is sneaking into the society and learning about their magic and what they call it and how they work it she's also learning about her black ancestors and how they used the magic and what they called it and what they did with it and stuff like that. And so I liked the fact that you don't get this one-sided tale of how this magic is supposed to be used. You see multiple sides and you see how different people use that magic based off of their privilege and their class and honestly like desperation <laughs> so I really enjoyed that a lot um, I liked that it you you it she tied it into the story so well that it, it literally makes sense the whole time you're like oh my gosh yes yes that makes sense oh my gosh speak like you're like I I'm angry at these colonizers for doing all this stuff um, so I really liked that I liked the diversity in this story there's a non-binary character there are queer characters and it's just there and I love it there's no questioning there's it's just 
they're there. I won't say they're main characters, but they're not even side characters. They contribute to the story, and I really enjoyed that as well. The other thing, I, I to this day, still think about the ending because it was just done so well. Like I kind of had an inkling of how it was going to end, but the the context behind it, I had no clue. And so I loved that. And I'm not gonna spoil it, of course, because I definitely want you to experience this ending by yourself, but uh, it made me so excited to read the second book. I'm excited to see what happens because I know some rules are about to be heavily broken in the second book and I'm just really hyped to see this. That's all I'm going to say about this because honestly I'm rambling and I don't know how to speak without speaking spoilers and I definitely don't want to do that for you all. So if you're just looking for a sign to read this book, this is your sign. Please go pick it up, borrow it from your library, do whatever you need to do to read it because it's so good. and. I think Tracy Dion needs to like needs all the props for writing this story and it's definitely probably one of my top three books of the year so I can already just say it now because I don't think anything is gonna live up to this at this point. So those are my two books that I read <laughs> in September. Let's hope October is better. Who knows? And yeah, I hope you all liked the video. Please like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all that below. If you are not good at commenting, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji in the comment section. And uh, let me know if you have any favorite books you read in September or how your September reading went at all in the comments. I would love to hear because I, I'm hoping all of you did better than me. <laughs> and if you want to see more videos from me, please subscribe down below. You are all sunflowers in a world full of weeds. Thank you.